The year is 1788. On the banks of the Lujan River in Argentina, a priest stumbles upon a bone. It is not a cow bone. It is not a horse bone. It is a femur, as thick as a tree trunk. When these remains reached Europe, they sent shockwaves through the scientific world. The great anatomist Georges Cuvier looked at them and realized something terrifying. This world, the world we walk on today, was once ruled by monsters. He named it Megatherium, the Great Beast. For decades, people struggled to understand it. Was it an elephant, a giant armored mole? Today, we know the truth. It was a sloth, but not the slow, sleepy creatures clinging to rainforest branches today. This was a ground sloth, a four-ton titan that didn't hide in the canopy because it didn't have to. To understand why this animal was so successful, you have to look at its engineering. The skeleton of Megatherium americanum is a biological fortress. Its hips are immensely wide, far wider than an elephant's. This massive pelvic girdle wasn't just for walking, it was an anchor point for some of the most powerful muscles in the animal kingdom. This design allowed the sloth to do something that defied gravity. By using its thick muscular tail as a third leg, a tripod, it could rear up to a towering height of six meters. From up here, it was untouchable. A browser that could reach the freshest leaves that even the mammoths couldn't touch. But look closer at its hands. These aren't the hands of a herbivore. Megatherium possessed claws nearly a foot long. They were non-retractable. They were so large that the animal couldn't even walk on its palms. It had to walk on the sides of its feet, hobbling in a strange rolling gait known as pedal inversion. It sacrificed speed for weaponized hands. And for a long time, this sparked a dark theory among paleontologists. If you are a plant eater, you need flat teeth for grinding, but you don't necessarily need 12-inch daggers on your hands. In the 1990s, some biomechanical studies suggested something disturbing. The triceps muscles, the muscles used for extending the arm, were built for explosive power. This led to the killer sloth hypothesis. The theory was simple. What if Megatherium wasn't just browsing trees? What if it used its size to bully predators? To steal carcasses? Some even suggested it might have hunted, overturning glyptodonts like turtles and ripping them open. It is a terrifying image the largest land mammal predator of all time. But is it true? To solve this crime, science looked inside the bones, specifically at the chemical signature of the atoms themselves. Stable isotope analysis of carbon and nitrogen allows us to see exactly what an animal ate thousands of years ago. The verdict? Megatherium was a vegetarian. The nitrogen levels match those of deer and horses, not wolves or bears. Those massive claws were likely for pulling down heavy branches and for making sure that nothing, absolutely nothing, messed with it. It was a peaceful giant, but the world it lived in was about to become a war zone. For thousands of years, an adult megatherium lived a life of absolute privilege. It walked through a landscape teeming with giants. The armored glyptodon grazed at its feet like living boulders. Herds of macrocania, the strange trunk-nosed camels of the south, 
parted ways when the shadow of the sloth fell over them. It had no natural enemies. Even the saber-tooth cat, Smilodon Populator, the largest cat to ever live, knew better than to attack a healthy adult. One swipe of those claws could crush a skull. One kick from those massive legs could shatter a spine. The sloth was a fortress that could not be breached. But ecosystems are fragile things. And around 12,000 years ago, the rules of the game changed. The climate began to shift. The lush open woodlands started to disappear, replaced by harsher, drier scrub. Food became scarcer. And then, a new sound drifted across the wind. A new predator had entered South America. It was small, it was slow, it had no claws and no fangs. By all laws of nature, it should have been insignificant. But it possessed a weapon the Megatherium had never seen before. Coordination. For a long time, scientists argued about whether humans actually hunted these giants. Perhaps we just scavenged their bones? Surely, attacking a four-ton beast with stone tips was suicide. But in 2007, a discovery at a site called Campo Laborde in Argentina silenced the doubters. At Campo Laborde, archaeologists found a single megatherium. Its bones were scattered in an ancient swamp deposit. But mixed among the ribs were stone tools, a broken quartzite knife, scrapers, The ribs bore the undeniable V-shaped cut marks of butchery. This was not scavenging. The evidence shows the animal was trapped, likely driven into the mud, where its massive weight became a disadvantage. The invincible fortress had a weakness. It could be outsmarted. The finding at Campo Laborde is dated to around 12,600 years ago. It is a snapshot of the exact moment the balance of power shifted forever. The Megatherium did not vanish overnight. It was likely a slow, agonizing fade, caught between a changing climate that destroyed their food and a new predator that targeted their young. The population collapsed. And then, silence. The forests of South America are still here. The trees they used to topple still grow. But the architects of the landscape are gone. The king of the pampas sleeps beneath our feet.